for trainers, collectives, and individuals that were looking for a program to follow that was chud free or perhaps one that came directly from us, there is Liberation Martial Arts Online. Thanks to Steve Craig Young, Zach Chapman, and Michael Batterson for signing up. If you would like to sign up for Liberation Martial Arts Online, or you just want to increase your financial support for the Southpaw Project, you can find special tiers on our Patreon. If you'd like to listen to all of our shows without any breaks or interruptions, you can find uncut versions of our shows also on Patreon. This is Sam. And this is Southpaw. This episode was sponsored by S.H., M. Shelton, Berkshire People's Gem, and New Guy. Anyone who's had a parent, or perhaps a grandparent, devoted to cooking, you know food is more than food. When made by the right person, Food can become small mysteries, channeled with all the love and affection a person can muster. It absorbs all the wonderful qualities of a loving parent, grandparent, spouse, lover, or even child. In a bite, you not only learn about the creator, but also about yourself. You inherit knowledge of your past, not just of your family but also your culture of what makes you, you, that you are never alone. This is why I read cookbooks. A good cookbook is not just a repository for recipes. In a good cookbook, food is metaphor for home. It's the conduit for the life lived by its creator to be passed down to its recipients. However, Though we can all enjoy food, it's difficult to find good writing on the preparation of food. But one book does stand out above the rest. Marcella Hazan's Essentials of Classic Italian Cooking. And of Italian cooking, Hazan writes, Eating in Italy is essentially a family art, practiced for and by the family. The finest accomplishments of the home cook are not reserved like the good silver and china, for special occasions or for impressing guests, but are offered daily for the pleasure and happiness of the family group. Here, Hazan clarifies the differences between home cooking and restaurant cooking. It's cooking in the home where food is not made for profit, but to keep you fed, alive, and satisfied. In fact, it's the opposite ethos of the restaurant. Because in the home, every meal served is a minus in the financial ledger. But it's a sacrifice any home cook is willing to make over and over again. Hazan continues. Not everyone in Italy may know how to cook, but nearly everyone knows how to eat. Eating in Italy is one more manifestation of the Italian's age-old gift of making art out of life. This is not only true for Italy, but all regional cooking. Home cooking is cultural exchange. Food is material. What is at the heart of the matter is familial bonds and community, and the greater understanding of one's place in existence. It is not created, not to speak of creative, cooking of restaurant chefs. It is the cooking that spans remembered history that has evolved during the whole course of transmitted skills and intuitions in homes throughout the Italian peninsula and the islands, in its hamlets, on its farms, in its great cities. It is cooking from the home kitchen. Of course there have been, and there still are, aristocrats' homes, merchants' homes, peasants' homes. But however disparate the amenities, 
they have one vital thing in common, food. Whether it's simple or elaborate, it is cooked in the style of the family. There is no such thing as Italian haute cuisine because there are no high or low roads in Italian cooking. All roads lead home. All roads lead home. That line shattered me into a million little pieces. It's what we all want, isn't it? Whether we pursue money, sex, power, or gastronomic experiences, we just want to be closer to the home of yesterday. Whether it's the love we felt as a child, or it's the love we wished we felt. On simplicity and getting to the core of what matters, Hazan writes, Perhaps without my always being fully conscious of it, the dishes continue to evolve, moving always toward being a simpler, clearer expression of their primary flavors, and toward a steadily diminishing dependence on cooking fat. It's about respecting the essentials. In the Italian kitchen, ingredients are not treated as promising but untutored elements that need to be corrected through long and intricate manipulation and refined by the ultimate polish of a sauce. Whether in society or in the kitchen, the important things don't trickle down from the top like cheap sauce or cheese to cover up for bad ingredients. It's the other way around. Flavor in Italian dishes builds from the bottom. It is not a cover, it is a base. A foundation of flavor supports, lifts, and points up the principal ingredients. We think the answer is more. Double it. When there's a problem, double down. Is the job to highlight or to cover up? And that depends on whether or not you created your foundation the right way. I believe with my whole heart in the act of cooking. In its smells, in its sounds, in its observable progress on the fire. The microwave separates the cook from the cooking, cutting off the emotional and physical pleasure deeply rooted in the act. And not even with its swiftest and neatest performance can the push-button wizardry of the device compensate for such a loss. Hazan adds, I need to smell its smells, to hear its sounds, to see food in a pot that simmers, bubbles, sizzles. I enjoy the physical involvement of stirring. Turning, poking, mashing, scraping. Like all noble qualities, home cooking is not convenient cooking. Convenience removes us from direct experience. And since life can only be known through experience, to remove ourselves from direct experience is to remove ourselves from the act of living. We are in such a rush for results, we forget that the part in the middle, the thing between birth and death, is everything. What is in need of praise is not speed, but slowness. Yet we are often unreasonable, and we forget these little things the parts that separate humanity from machine. Do not throw out the water in which the mushrooms soaked because it is rich with porcini flavor. Filter it through a strainer lined with paper toweling, collecting it in a bowl or beaked pouring cup. Set aside to use as the recipe will subsequently instruct. And water. So common that we take it for granted. Yet water is vital. Common things are vital. We move to the next thing, the newer thing, rather than mastering the first thing. We move on to other things before we master our breath, our bodies, our minds, and our spirits. Then we spend the rest of our days in a race against time, trying to get back to the first thing. Water is at the same time the most precious and most unobstructive ingredient in Italian cooking, and its value is immense precisely because it is self-effacing. 
what water gives you is time. Time to cook a meat sauce long enough without drying out or becoming too concentrated. Time for a roast to come around when using that superb Italian technique of roasting meat over a burner with the cover slightly askew. Time for a stew or fricassee or a glazed vegetable to develop flavor and tenderness. Water allows you to glean the tasty particles on the bottom of a pan without relying too much on such solvents as wine or stock that might tip the balance of flavor. When it has done its job and has been boiled away, water disappears without a trace, allowing your meats, your vegetables, your sauces to taste forthrightly of themselves. Moreover, what you keep out is as significant as what you put in. What is of value is time. What extras buy you are shortcuts. But you can do with less and fewer ingredients with time as your ally. And what is our usual relationship with time? It's our enemy. We're always against it. We hate it. And we think we're always running out of it. Yet when we have too much time, we're bored with it. We hate it. And we wish it would go faster. Time, like water, is taken for granted. But time is not our natural enemy. What used to be natural was for time to be our friend and teacher. To plant the seed and allow time to do its work. Give a child a lesson and allow time to do the rest. To master the primary, flavors or otherwise, is to master time. With simple Buddhist cooking, to achieve flavor, rather than rich ingredients, the monk uses time. It is her greatest asset. Time beats money. Time eventually beats everything. The more you have, the less time you can spend with any one thing. The less time to do any one thing. Rather than fight time, do what we were meant to do. Embrace time. Because the flavor of vegetable soup improves upon reheating, you needn't make this minestrone entirely from scratch the same day you're going to serve it. You can cook the soup that constitutes its base a day or two earlier. Like people, some things need time and a second chance to bloom. Maybe frozen when done. Once you develop skill or knowledge, you don't have to use it right away. You can apply it when ready. There are many things you should learn, not for immediate use, but because it'll serve you later on. Remember, blandness is not a virtue. Tastelessness is not a joy. And work with what you have. Virtually anything edible can become the flavor base of a risotto. Don't confuse the essential for convenience. Before the cup, there was still water. Before the wheel, there was still travel. Before there was an oven, there was bread. The point is to live a rich and textured life. If you don't have the ideal conditions, just start from wherever you are. Pizza is made from improvisation and brooks no dogmas about its toppings. Cooking is creative. Food is art. And if you get lost, improvise. Have fun. I don't cook concepts. I use my head, but I cook from the heart. I cook for flavor. And sometimes, there is nothing more to be said. Once the pasta is sauced, serve it promptly, inviting your guests and family to put off talking and start eating. Remember, what people do with food is an act that reveals how they construe the world. Furthermore, an Italian meal is a lively sequence of sensations, alternating the crisp with the soft and yielding, the pungent with the bland, 
the variable with the staple, the elaborate with the simple. We go about our lives believing the world is binary, black or white. And we can get away with this sort of fallacious thinking without ever thinking we are wrong. But cooking, like in the martial arts, when you believe something fallacious, there's instant objective feedback. You lose the match. Your meal is awful. Cook at a lively heat. Stir from time to time. Taste and correct for salt and hot pepper. Toss the pasta with the sauce, then add both cheeses, and toss thoroughly again. Once you begin, keep it lively. Check on your progress and adjust as you go along. The explanation is that I consider cooking to be an act of love. I do enjoy the craft of cooking, of course. Otherwise, I would not have done so much of it. But that is a very small part of the pleasure it brings me. What I love is to cook for someone. To put a freshly made meal on the table, even if it is something very plain and simple, as long as it tastes good and is not a ready-to-eat something bought at the store, is a sincere expression of affection. It is an act of binding intimacy directed at whoever has a welcome place in your heart. And while other passions in your life may at some point begin to bank their fires, the shared happiness of good homemade food can last as long as we do. Hazan expands on this further by saying, The Italian comes to his table with the same open heart with which a child falls into his mother's arms, with the same easy feeling of being in the right place. When my mother was alive, she put all her love and effort into her meals. When I asked her why, she told me all the ways she felt she was lacking, not only as a mother, but also as a person. But the one area where she felt she could impart all of her essence was in her cooking. She was, in many ways, a victim of circumstances. But in the kitchen, she was a maestro. She told me when she cooked, she didn't think about recipes. She only thought of her children. For these reasons, it is not enough to say she was an excellent cook. There are many fine cooks and chefs, but few are loving cooks, and I'll never taste her cooking again. So, when I miss her, I pick up a cookbook. Rather than replicating the taste, I want to know the thoughts of those who put their hearts and souls into their meals so that I may better understand what she was thinking because I didn't ask enough. Then, sometimes, better than other books, a proper cookbook can express the warm embrace of our mothers and our longing to return home. If you like this episode and you like what we do, support us on Patreon. We also have the Liberation Martial Arts Program if you want to train with us from wherever you are. There's lots of techniques, exercises, theory, pedagogy, and even political theory, believe it or not. You can find Liberation Martial Arts online also on Patreon. You can find Southpaw merch at our store. You can find all pertinent links on the show notes. With all that said, Thanks for listening.